My name is Jose Lavoie, and my ancestry is French from Quebec. And I grew up in remote communities uh, across Quebec, mining towns. I was born in a community of 200, and I lived in northern remote communities through my childhood. And at this point, perhaps I should tell you, now I'm at the University of Manitoba. I'm a professor and in the Department of Community Health Sciences, but I'm also the director of Angamazen Research, which is one of the oldest um, university-based Indigenous health research center in Canada, and one of the largest as well. We have over 60 faculty members that are affiliated with Angamazen Research. And that center is dedicated to supporting Indigenous health research conducted in partnership with communities. And I'm also the lead for the Prairie Indigenous Knowledge Exchange Network, which is our mentorship program for Indigenous students. And it's also known as, also known as PikeNet. I am a member of the project as the lead of the mentorship program. Those two programs are working hand in hand. So our mentorship program focuses on university-based Indigenous students engage in Indigenous health research, and that can be health from an Indigenous perspective, can be language, can be law, it could be architecture, or it could be very biomedical, or it could be Indigenous knowledge. So it's very broad understanding of health. And, uh, Kiriche project, the linear project, focus more on building capacity or supporting the, the expansion of indigenous organizations' capacity in engaging in partnership-based research. So the, the two are complementary. So we, I, I, I work with Jamie on decisions related to Kiriche. Jamie sits on also our advisory committee in making decisions on funding of students. So we sort of, we're kind of a team. I've been working with the Assembly of Manitoba Chiefs initially, and now the First Nation Health and Social Secretariat of Manitoba, which is also affiliated with the Assembly of Manitoba Chief. I've been working with that organization since 2004 in partnership-based research. And so fundamentally, partnership is about relationships. So I have a relationship with a number of people who work with Finism and who are in, in a variety of roles. So I'm supervisor to two staff that are pursuing their PhD or among committees, which are the staff that are pursuing their PhDs, um, and have friendships, have traveled with, with, uh, with members of, of that organization, and we co-design research projects together. So if I have an idea or they have an idea, we'll come together, we'll figure out how to best pursue that idea, who should be leading, whether it's me or a member of that organization. Sometimes I'm asked to lead because they're flat out, they have no time. So we now have a COVID-19 project together. But leading, you know, whoever's name comes first does not mean anything, but it's whoever's name comes first because all the decisions are made together. And it's about ensuring that um, communities or indigenous organizations have a leading voice at all time and that the research is relevant and beneficial to the community or to the organization and that is best ensured by that organization having oversight of the project it would be the same if i work with a community um, the community would lead or at least be part, they would define what my role is, is, is essentially what that means. And whatever role they feel I should play is the role that I play. So sometimes I'm just technical support to 
getting the funding together and then it, it it's managed by that community and then they, they tell me how I can best support their decision making. I also work with the Manitoba Inuit Association and the partnership with that organization when we started, they, they were not at the same place as Finism. It's a newer organization and they were looking for support to write proposals for programs. And so, although we did, we were doing research together on topics that are a priority to them, we also invested time in writing proposals to support the expansion of that organization so that would be able to offer program to the community. So a true partnership is to, to work with a community or an organization based on what their priorities are, to look up where they are, and to play a supporting role, which goes sometimes beyond even research. But it, it's, it's about relationship. I think the best example is the uh, a study that we completed with Finism, but also in partnership with eight communities, First Nation communities, um, and we're still writing up the results. So right off the bat, I think 80% of the funding was managed by Finism, right? And the communities were given funding so that they could hire their own researchers. And those researchers, in partnership with the leadership in those communities, define how they would, what were their priorities, and how they would pursue their own research. Then we created profiles of their own. Uh, they created profile of their own community, which we supplemented with data that exists, health data. To, to support their decision making and their thinking about their communities. And then they define priorities for service expansion or for striking their own services. We conducted nearly 300 interviews during that studies and it's that data has been owned by Finism and the communities together. And so it, then, it never came to the university because was not relevant for us to have access to that data. And so, and we're still writing from that data and the communities get the papers and they see what we're writing and they get an opportunity to comment. But all of the papers have been led or co-led by Finism. So that's, I think that's the closest, that's the most recent example. make a distinction between self-determination at the individual level, at the family or community level, and at an organizational level. So in research, self-determination at the individual is, prayer, it is, is consent and it's fully informed consent, right? It's the right to participate knowing fully what the benefit and the impact will be and the right to withdraw consent at any time. And so that's an ethical principle. At the family and community level, it means the same thing, but it means that an individual consent is not sufficient, that communities have the right to say as a collective whether they want research to happen in their communities what do they want from that research, whether it meets their priority and whether it needs to be adapted, and how they want to be identified or not identified in the study, right? So there's this control and that's just relationship, that's just a matter of respect. And it's the same at the organization level with Finism, it's the right of Finism or the Manitoba Inuit Association to say, you know, great proposal, very interesting study, but it just doesn't meet our priorities right now. So as an organization, we're not going to support that. It's not that you're bad. It's not that the research is bad. It's just that we don't have time to pursue things that are not a priority. So we choose not to support this. And, and, and it's, so it's the right to say no. I think it's the simplest way I can put it. And the right to say, no, thank you maybe some other time and it, it's that's not disrespectful that's not obstructive it's just 
free and prior informed consent. Right? Yeah. <laughs> the state of the world, maybe that would be a long conversation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think this is such an important project because community organizations are want to be involved in research, indigenous organizations want to be involved in, in leading research, but yet the academy and the research funders have not really invested in supporting the, the resources, the workforce within those organizations so that they can participate equally. And so in some ways there's been partnership, but it can become lopsided because universities are so much better resource for doing the research. So Kiss Strategy is an, an opportunity for indigenous organizations to come together and define what is respectful research, how they want to be engaged, developing their own policies, developing their own ethical review process, if that's what they want to do, and defining their own priorities so that when researchers like me approach those organizations, they're better equipped to say, yes, this will work for us, or no, this will not work. And it will strengthen research in Manitoba. It is a good thing. It is. Uh, I think we're going to come out of this project, which if successful uh, in its renewal, will go on for 15 years. So that's that's unbelievable. That's never happened before. We will come out as a province as being extremely strong. We're already a leader in Indigenous health research. Community organizations here pursue research that are, is not done anywhere else. And we're going to be even stronger as a result. So it's a very exciting opportunity.